Hello YouTube. Um, today is uh, Friday, November 9th, 2012, which makes this video number nine in my 30 and 30 series, 30 videos in 30 days of November for Trans Awareness Month. Um, I am trying to do a bunch of shorter videos than I normally do so that I can post a new one every day and people can, you know, learn in little chunks rather than sit through 20 minutes of me hammering on. Um, so... Today I wanted to talk about um, privilege, um, because I think that um, people don't understand what privilege is. They don't understand that they can have privilege and not know it, um, and that having privilege doesn't make them a bad person. So I want to talk about what privilege is. Privilege is the systemic um, benefits and advantages given to one particular group over another group. So. Um, the opposite of having of, of being privileged is being marginalized. Um, you'll also hear it as privileged and oppressed. Um, I think talking about oppression tends to turn off the ears of somebody who wants to um, better themselves. So um, privilege is the systemic benefits and advantages conferred to um, one group over another due solely to circumstances of birth. Um, and, and those are, they're built into the system. So you'll hear words like kyriarchy, K-Y-R-I-A-R-C-H-Y, kyriarchy, I think. Um, but it's, it's the replacement word for patriarchy. Because patriarchy, patriarchy only refers to um, the male privilege versus um, female marginalization. Uh, because as a guy, you have it much easier than a woman does. You still have to work, okay. So there's male privilege, there's uh, white privilege, there's cisgendered privilege, which is cisgender meaning not transgendered, means your gender aligns with the sex you were assigned at birth. Um, uh, straight privilege and um, uh, able privilege, you know, able-bodied versus disabled. Um, neurotypical privilege, um, you know, there's all of these axes of privilege that intersect. And that's why third wave feminism talks about intersectionality, because you can have white privilege and not have male privilege because you're a white female. Um, you can have male privilege and not have uh, white privilege because you're a black male. Um, although that's a totally different intersection uh, than uh, white female, you know. So understanding privilege helps you to understand that other people don't necessarily have it as easy as you. Um, in my male presentation, I am a white male and I'm partnered to a woman, so I look heterosexual and um, I'm middle class, so I have that class privilege. You know, all of these things that make it a little bit easier for me to move around in the world. There's, um, there's a wonderful essay called Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack that discusses white privilege. And that's what really sort of kicked off this whole um, uh, realm of study. Um, I think the woman's name was McCall who wrote it. And she talks about how, um, as a white person, she can consume media and have a reasonable expectation that she will see somebody of her race on that show or in that advertisement. Um, she has a reasonable expectation that she can go into a grocery store, a, a clothing store and not be harassed by a salesperson, um, you know, and, and not have it assumed that she is casing the joint to steal something. Um, you know, there's all of these expectations and privileges that are conferred along with being white in, in especially the, the United States. Um, culture and society. Um, those privileges all, you know, exist along all these different axes. axes. And um, one of those, one of those sets of privileges, cisgender privilege, and it's just the assumption that gender. It, it's it's the ability to assume that gender is binary. That that um, there are men, and there are women, and there are differences, and they're obvious, and um, and that leads to things like assuming transgender people have a choice about whether or not they 
um, transition or um, suffer from dysphoria uh, or, you know, heterosexual privilege is the assumption that being gay is a choice and they can have their attraction but choose not to act on it, you know, and that's the same as being heterosexual and having the urges but choosing not to act on it. Um, that's a personal choice. Your actions are the personal choice, but those are because you make those choices because you feel comfortable, you're ready to have sex or you're not ready to have sex, but not because being heterosexual is right and proper and being gay is sinful and wrong. You know, you choose not to have sex because you're choosing not to have sex, not because you're choosing not to have gay sex or you're choosing not to have straight sex, you know. Um, gay people have no more um, attraction to um, the opposite sex than heterosexual people have attraction to the same sex, you know. You, most straight people cannot choose to be gay any more than gay people can choose to be straight. But the ability to assume that they can is a heterosexual privilege because it's normal. Privilege is all of those things that are just normal in a society. Um, you know, believe it or not, I've heard somebody talking about um, somebody of a different race, and um, it was they were talking about two different people. One was black and another was white, and they said something about one person being black, and um, the other person later in the conversation, oh, no, they were normal. Well, yeah, normal's white in our society. And that's not okay. That's a white privilege. You know, all privilege are all of those things where you can divide it into normal and abnormal. And if you fall into the normal category, that's a privilege. Um, you have to, if you don't have that privilege, you have to fight against those expectations and those norms all of the time because you're constantly falling outside of normal society. Um, people on the inside, on that normal section, don't see that what that what exists outside of that is um, any different from what's what's in here. They're just choosing not to be rich. You know, p poor people are lazy. They choose not to put forth the effort to better themselves. That's not exactly the case. There's a lot of reasons someone can be poor, and um, you can no more wake up and say, you know what, today I'm going to be rich, than you can wake up and say, today I'm going to be Hispanic. You know, I, I, I can't make those choices. Um, so, I, I, the, the way that I, 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 I've seen it that was really well put was by um, John Scalzi, which is being a white male is like playing the game of life on easy mode. And the more marginalizations you pile up on somebody, um, the higher the difficulty that they have to play the game of life at. So you're both traveling down the same road, um, but in different lanes. And if you're a white male, your lane is paved a hell of a lot smoother than, um, you know, a trans woman of color, you know? Um, so the fact that you get to travel faster is not failing on her part. It's a, it's a systemic problem. Um, so I think that that whole concept of privilege was the most transformative concept I've encountered in my entire life. Um, it, it just really changed the way that I viewed the world. And I used to actually be pretty conservative. Um, that's not the case anymore um, because I understand differently that um, the advantages that I've had growing up and, and you know, in life are not the same advantages that everybody else has. And having privilege is not a guarantee of an easy life. It just means that you have an easier access to resources and um, advantages than somebody else. There's a lot of poor white people, you know? Being white doesn't guarantee financial uh, success or being, you know, in a higher class. But the ability for a white person to advance class or, or um, uh, change their class is a somewhat easier path than for a black person to change their class, you know, even if they're coming from the same neighborhood. Um, so, yeah, so that's privilege. It's, it's a really, really complex, really interesting subject, and I think you would benefit yourself from researching it and checking out third wave feminism, because the thing about third wave feminism is that it is actually for everyone.
Um, and, and, you know, feminism is not a dirty word. Uh, feminism is about having the right to choose. And that doesn't mean necessarily abortion. It just means the right to choose who you are as a person and um, not be punished for um, things that are outside of your control, too. Anyway, that's all I have for today, for, for this one. It's, again, run long. I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep these shorter, and I'm failing at it. Anyway, um, comment, email, etc. Check my Check below for contact information.